What is up, guys? What it, up, everyone? It's Ross and David. The Shooters Club is back. It's been a year. We're back, baby. The pandemic happened. The pandy. During the pandemic, David and I started mm-hmm. a company, and uh, we're just going to go into like how we started our company, the nitty gritty of it, like websites to use. Is it an S corp, an LLC? But kind of the stuff that nobody talks about. So we're super excited to be back. And we also talk about our new business and our gear choices, which yep. is man, it's just super fun. Team Sony, we're super pumped. Yep. But thank you guys for being here, and we'll get right into the episode. Let's go. What is up, everybody? The Shooters Club is back. We're back, baby. Man, we're so happy to be here. I don't know what episode this is, but it's our first episode in over a year. <laughs> I think it's around the 10th episode where we finished off before the pandemic. Man, welcome everybody. Welcome to the Shooters Club. We're so happy to be back. My name is Ross Thomas. And I'm David. And uh, we are Lux Production House. What? What is that? <laughs> what is Lux Production House? You might be asking, because that wasn't a thing on our last episode, which was in February, I believe, of 2020. Mm -hmm. Over a year ago, dude. Over a year. Over a year ago. So uh, we're going to take this first episode back to kind of explain what we did Uh, during the crazy times. I know this has been a, a wild past year, over a year, for the film and photography communities with everybody getting their jobs canceled, weddings yeah. canceled. You weddings. Can s- speak to that on your side of things. But um, we decided to kind of double down in the last year. Yeah. When it was You know, it's, it's never going to be the best time to start. You just have to start. So, yeah, we're like, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's start a company. Why not? Why, <laughs> Why not? not? One thing I've learned over the last year, while there have been some wild hurdles, uh, there have also been a lot of opportunities. And so I, th- I think that it's been a really good exercise for me and for you to to find those opportunities when it seems like the world is figuratively and literally sometimes burning. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that time I came into town and it was the sky was red. Um, but yeah, a lot of times it, it was difficult to to stay positive and be like, you know what? Um, we have to keep going and, and just, you have to innovate. You have to keep pushing. It was hard to be motivated at times, but I also told myself, you know what, if we don't do something now, like people will be making things happen. New companies will spring up, you know, people are always learning and I wanted to stay ahead of the curve, you know, just like you. And we're like, let's do it. Let's, let's jump right in and, um, begin a company. Yeah, so uh, we don't want to like go into all the the horrible over the last year because that's not. I mean, it's over. Well, hopefully, it's it's almost over. Winding down. Yeah, winding down. But everybody has had their struggles. We've had our struggles, but you know, we've also had a lot, a lot of work, which has been a, a huge blessing, yep. um, and forced to do a lot of work um, in other ways on our other businesses, both good and bad. Yeah. But um, where were we last time we left off? So February, our last episode was with jared hill and we were in a car we filmed it on the gopro yep and we were we were headed up to the mountains jared has since moved to montana yep crazy so he's out beautiful there montana man he's out there doing his thing it's beautiful brought his family out there he's got his business thriving over there he's still on youtube but that was a that was a fun last episode. What a what an innocent time then, you know. <laughs> I know, I know. We didn't know what was coming that year. Nope, steam rolled right through. But but yeah, so that's where we were. That was our last episode. Um, it was a fun time, and then the last year happened, and David and I had been kind of playing with the idea of starting our own company, and it all stemmed from relationships. We'd done some work. Um, separate together on the commercial side of things in the area. And uh, we thought like, hey, if we can continue getting more work, it's probably going to be beneficial to just start one company instead yeah. of having clients pay Ross and then pay David separately. Yeah, we separately. were doing that, right? For a second, we were yeah. doing that. I, for- I forgot about that. Yeah, so... We were having a clients, <laughs> they would pay me, they would pay you. They would have to split up the, the budget yeah, yeah. That, I, for, I completely forgot about that. And it was just, we felt like, 
eventually like it was too much for the client mm -hmm. like we didn't want to force that on the client we didn't want to make their job any harder than it needed to be to give us money right yeah it, it, it's as simple as writing one check versus writing two you may think that um is crazy the least barriers you can you can put for them to to write that check and kind of communicate with you the the better yep and i know we were both kind of toying with the idea but it was like should we start a company? Is it too early? When do you start a company? Yep. When do you know? Because we're like, hey, you shoot, I shoot. Yep. We're kind of helping each other out on these shoots. Um, but when is it a good idea to yeah. actually start? That was like the question that kept coming up is like, well, I have my own business. I do the wedding filmmaking. Ross owns a gym. And it's like, okay, is it smart to start our own business? Um, and the question was when? Because we liked shooting with each other. We liked hanging out, doing, working together. So we were spending more time together shooting on these projects. And it was like kind of, you know, life was just kind of bringing us closer together um, until we had to make, make that choice. And I think, go ahead, Ross, sp speak to, to that. I think, I think one thing that we, we identified pretty early on was um, it was easier to shoot with two people. Yep less problems occurred if they did occur it was easier for us to handle yep. stuff so when you're shooting by yourself you guys know this you're a one-man band you're you're shooting by yourself you got to worry about audio video yep. lighting uh, everything everything and and there it's something's more likely to go wrong when you're just running solo because you're thinking about creative you're thinking about technical you're thinking about directing um, clients i was doing some commercial work with some beverage companies and it was like I was setting up my own light and trying to figure all this out and it's so much more easier like the nerves kind of go away when you have someone you can talk to yeah you can fall back on and be like all right can we set this up you know you kind of play off each other it just makes everything run so much smoother um, where we were like you know what you come help me out at this shoe I would go help you out and it, it just kind of everything doesn't just rest on your shoulders you know the yeah. one-man band thing is cool for for a certain amount of time, but I think just having that another person, you know, just whether it's an assistant or your partner that's going to, you know, uh, direct with you and set everything up along with you, um, just having someone there to help out um, mm -hmm. is always better than just kind of doing it yourself. Nothing against, you know, one man bands if you like doing that, but I think as a safety measure and companies feel a little more comfortable, like, oh, it's okay, you know, he's got an assistant or they're yep. both coming and setting up and, you know, um, I think they feel a little better as well. For sure. But one, one thing that we identified pretty early on too was that the money had to be there for two yep. people. Uh, I feel like so often when you're a one-man band, you're trying to quote these jobs and you're trying to get it as low as you possibly can for your client so that yeah. you'll win it. You'll get the job, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're at a certain point, you have to be confident in your work and you have to be willing to say, we're bringing, even though two people is not really a crew, um, we're bringing a crew, we're bringing multiple people on board to ensure that you, the client, that your video, that your photos, whatever the project is, is going to be handled smoothly. And there, I wouldn't call it a premium, but there is, there is a price to pay for that. Um, so you have to be able to get that money so that you can pay two people. You're going to have different expenses as a company. And so what we want to do today is kind of talk about the things that no one talks about. Yeah. How? How do you start your business? How, like, how do you elect officers? What <laughs> type of business should you start? How do you do payroll? Like, are you just taking money out of your bank account? Yeah. Is it in your personal bank account? Like, and, and, <laughs> and this was all new to me. Like, I have my own business, but I was a sole proprietor as a wedding filmmaker. So I didn't have to go and start um, an S Corp that we'll get into. You know, do you go LLC? Do you go sole proprietorship? Do you go S Corp? What do you do? This was all new to me. Um, Ross kind of you know, guided us through it all. And I don't know everything, but yeah. I, I know what I know. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what I don't know. We <laughs> kind of figure it out as, as you go. Figure it out along the way. And um, it was really cool to kind of see how everything, a lot of it is about just making the decision and making it happen like right away. Like, oh, we're going to start a company. All right, let's call. You know, that's one thing I learned from Ross is like, let's, let's just do it today. You know, it's like um, a lot of times, a lot of people are like, oh, we'll start a company next week you know and then next week turns into next month but next it also month turns it, into next year it seems unattainable you hear you hear words like corporation company yeah you hear words like that and you think oh it's this big grandiose thing but the majority of quote-unquote corporations are small businesses yeah. 
that are just you know they it you you have a corporation just to protect your personal li- yourself from the liability that comes along with with owning a business so that if someone sues you they can't go after your personal assets yeah. your home it it gives you that amount of protection and 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 when the 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 clients are paying you know they they like to see a company there it's not just individuals that they're paying as well yep so it's beneficial for you know jobs getting more jobs dealing with clients absolutely Um, and so we got to the point where it's like okay i'm charging this much on my own you're charging this much how about we come together we're getting enough work we had a we had a client initially that would say hey we need both both of you guys to come and we were kind of just working together and and um that's kind of how we started we started um having all those jobs together for for this company and it kind of just made sense and we just decided to start yeah so here on my notes the things i wanted to talk about that we wanted to talk about that you know that was how and why we we started lux production house that's l-u-x check us out on instagram at lux production house luxproductionhouse.com yep uh check us out there uh lph got that merch (laughs) um how we set up our business and a lot of this stuff is stuff that i've learned from family from friends uh but let's say you want to start your own company like how do you do it do you just walk down to the courthouse and like get a business license how does that work and that's what i did for the sole proprietorship (laughs) and that's one option right yeah (laughs) there are there are pros and cons and i am not the biggest expert so Here's my disclaimer. I am not a attorney. I do not know everything about what I am talking about. Uh, but don't take this advice as legal advice. There's there's that. There it is. There's that disclaimer. Get that out of the way. But we chose just because of my personal experience to go with an S corp. Uh, I I I knew what it was, how it worked. I still don't fully understand the difference. Um, between an LLC and an S-Corp. I know that there's some self-employment tax possibly with an LLC, but an S-Corp needs to have employees and also officers. So what we did was we went to a website called corpnet.com, corp, C-O-R-P, corpnet.com. And what you do is you pay a fee to um, have them be your like registered agent. They get the uh, they get the corporation all set up. We decided to go with a California corporation. Um, they get the corporation all set up, and then we ha- we have them file our S corp election because originally you just file you to become a quote unquote corporation, and you need to tell them what what type of corporation you want to be. So we filed that S corp election, and um, then you have to elect officers. So your business needs a, a president, a vice president, a secretary, and a treasurer, technically on paper. And granted, I mean, we do everything, right? Yeah. Dave's a president, I'm the vice president, but it could be either or. Yep. I mean, it when you're a small company, it doesn't really matter, but you need to have those um, yeah. duties, quote unquote, on paper. Uh, and so we're protected personally because we're a corporation. If some somebody you know wants to frivolously file a lawsuit and say that uh, you know this happened or whatever on set yeah. or you threw your camera at me and hit me in the head, yeah. um, you know we would personally you know my house would be protected, your yeah. assets would be protected, yep. and that's that's a big part of of having um, a corporation. And, and that's the main difference between the sole proprietorship and an LLC or or S corp is is that liability. That's that's the the biggest difference I think between, yeah, it's, between them. It's huge. You still yeah. need to get your liability insurance. You yeah. still need to so But like your your personal belongings, like what yep. what they can come after, <laughs> say if they're going to sue you, what they can come after is um you know, what the company owns versus what you own, you know, yourself. Yep. Um, that's the biggest difference there. So and these are these are all costs that you're yeah. incurring, right? They're costs that you have to think about, that you have to build into your business model. But we filed an, we filed an S-Corp or a corporation. Then you, we got business insurance. And this is liability insurance. Yep. It's going to protect us on site in case anything happens. Um, we each in, have individual gear insurance, yep. and that's kind of a unique situation to us as, you know, we, we both brought gear into this situation. But we also ended up buying gear as a, as a company, and we'll, we'll get to that too once we yeah. started having revenue flow in. But, you know, make sure you set up that LLC, S Corp, um, wouldn't recommend a C Corp, uh, probably one of those two. Uh, but set, set that up, and, and you'll be glad you did. Yeah, and, and one thing, this was done over a phone call. 
in in a day you know like S super easy yeah this this was this took it just all it takes is a phone call you know and to to get get the ball rolling it kind of seems daunting at times when you're like what i don't even know what to do yep we so made the call and she kind of walked us through that that agent she kind of walked us through what we needed to do and it's an investment into who you are so you're gonna you're gonna get 300 to 800 bucks to file that corporation yep. Um, you're going to have, you know, depending on your, your liability, probably, you know, between 500 and a thousand bucks a year in the liability insurance. So you're going to be, you need to be prepared to incur those costs and you need to build that back in to yep. your, your pricing when you're, you're pricing that out to your clients. So, so get that corporation. You need to, you know, become an LLC or an S corp. Um, you need to elect officers and you need to get insurance. So one of uh, one of the awkward things and one of the things that I've, I've actually heard other people in the industry talk about, like, how do you pay yourselves? And um, sometimes they have an answer to it, and sometimes they don't really have a good answer to it. But, you know, as an S-Corp, Lux Production House needs to have employees, and those employees need to be paid. Like, at the end of the day, while we as photographers, filmmakers, whatever you want to call yourself, like we love what we're doing and it's in art form, right? But at the end of the day, you, you got to get paid. Yeah. Like you need money yeah. to live. <laughs> it's a reality of life. Unless you're doing this as, man, you got some crazy job and you're just doing this for the fun of it and you want to buy a red. Even doing it for the fun of it, eventually, you know, it, it, it takes a lot of time. What we yeah. do takes a lot of time and, and it's, valuable time and you should charge you know what you're worth and um it's make, a job make some money yeah it's a job it, make 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 some money as, they, as you pursue this they say like if you love what you do you'll never work a day in your life and that is a load of crap like you can love what you do but you still need to work and arguably you end up working more yeah so so before the whole pandemic i, I had a part-time job so then i quit my job in february to become a <laughs> wedding filmmaker full time and then the pandemic happened and then you know weddings canceled we still had a ton of weddings they were just smaller micro weddings but it, it's it's still a job you still have to you know there's going to be moments where um, you don't want to do it but the beauty of it is that you know every day you're filled with with um, excitement right like I'm excited to stay up till four in the morning editing I love I love it I love it and I think that might maybe what they mean like you won't work but it's like you're tired but I'm excited to work on it I'm excited to go to the field and shoot like you're building something for yourself when you and, it, and yes. there's nothing bad with having a nine to five nothing nothing wrong with that but when you are an entrepreneur and you work for yourself you're building something for yourself in your future and and I've talked to several people where they're like Man, I like you're working a nine to five like I was last year, and, and there's a there's a voice in your head that's telling you like, I need to work for myself. Like I, I I can do I can do something for myself, you know. And that thought always came into my head for years, for years. Um, I would I would say, you know what? Uh, like why don't I just work for myself? You know, like I'm working so hard for this company. Like why don't I work that hard or more or harder for myself? You know, and that yep. that's like where we're at now. It's like okay, how hard can we hustle? How hard can we get it, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's insp like it inspires my like I get so pumped up about it because it's like it's for us. It's not for anyone else, you yeah. know. It's like we get to make the profit. We get to put in our time to it, you know, into it, and we get to make all the decisions on what we what we want to do with yeah. the business. And imagine we were working it. like we were in a bigger area, and imagine we were working for like a, a big production company or a marketing firm, and we bust our butt and we get these big projects yeah. and they're like, we want to invest in this piece of gear. And we love gear. Yeah. We love, uh, like we love equipment. It's, yeah. it's fun. Um, but like the company buys it and we can't take it home. Yeah. Well, like yeah. It, yeah. there's just little things like that, right? Like the, it's an investment into yourself. We get to reap the rewards, but I mean, on the flip side, you, we also got to deal with the junk that comes up along the oh, way. Oh yeah. So, so one thing with that is, is, um, you know, once you switch from from part time, either you're working your nine to five part time, full time. Once you switch over to, uh, you know, you're running your own business that a lot of things, you know, a lot of people don't know is like you spend so much more time working, you know, the, the, you never clock. Like the moment you quit your other job or you just decide to start your own business, you live it, you, you clock in 
you never clock out <laughs> like, uh -uh. never clock out um my fiance knows this <laughs> you know i'm always busy my kids know this um you know you have to separate your time but you're constantly thinking 24 7. You're yeah like, okay how can i what what's a new idea what can we do what can we you know so be prepared for that as well absolutely but you're hustling for you yeah and that's, that's the main difference yeah it's amazing um back to payroll like how do you pay yourself um, do you just take money out? Do you write yourself a check? So if if we're in a corporation and you and I are the officers and we just write ourselves a check, that's a like that's what a, I thought. That's just <laughs> like we're drawing money out. That's a disbursement. Yeah. But we also have to pay ourselves a reasonable wage. So David and I use QuickBooks Online, and we use their payroll service. And uh, we're in California, so payroll taxes are hefty. But build that Every into your step model. Of the way, they, they reach in and they take the money <laughs> yep so we pay ourselves and we we started very low um we started low yeah and got our jobs in started getting paid and we pay ourselves every two weeks and after a couple months of that we said all right we got more money in the bank more revenues rolling in we finished more jobs we doubled our salaries per month and that's where we're sitting at right now and granted it's i mean with just this we're probably at like the poverty line yeah <laughs> i mean or or below it right like we're we're not making yeah. very much quote unquote money right now but we've got money sitting there yeah. and we know okay we've got a big project on the horizon we got a couple other um medium projects on the horizon if we can get this for 2021 um get that money in the bank we can probably add another third to it and yeah. keep rising keep rising and um Hopefully our costs remain relatively the same, but that's the goal with all this is we get paid every couple of weeks. It comes out automatically, goes into our bank account. But something that nobody talks about when it comes to businesses, I found out is payroll taxes. So let's say our business paid, paid us a hundred dollars yeah. in payroll, which you have to legally do. You can't just take that money out. You got to pay yourself. You know, those taxes get taken out of our check for social security, unemployment, all that stuff. But as a business, you have to pay about seven and a half percent. So Lux pays Ross or David a hundred bucks. My taxes are taken out, so I might make eighty bucks. Yeah. Or something like that, or even less. But on top of that, Lux has to pay another seven fifty to ten dollars to the state. Yeah. Just to be able to be able to do business and pay yourselves. Right. Yeah, yeah. So something you gotta think about when you start your business is you're gonna have to eat an additional seven and a half percent. So don't make $100 thinking that you're going to get $100. Yeah. You are the not. Mistake. Yeah, that's the mistake a lot of people make is they go off the hourly wage or they think, you know, oh, it's it's $1,000 for this job, you know. That's nothing. You're, you're not going to get, you know, first of all, you're not going to get the 1000 you know. <laughs> the time no. spent is a lot more. You're editing. You don't think about the editing time. Um, so this was on you to me. I, you know, like I said, I was running my own business and I, I still didn't fully understand it because... Nobody in my family comes from business, and I didn't have anyone to guide me. So talking with Ross, you know, he he uh, was already running his business and it, um, taught me a lot regarding to payroll yeah, so, and all that. Yeah, so I mean that, that goes back to charging what you're worth, right? It's not just about what you're worth at the yeah. end of the day. It's about your costs and those unforeseen costs, the things you don't think about, like the equipment insurance, the liability, the mandatory. We live in California, so if we make $0 this year we have to pay eight hundred dollars in taxes yeah i mean it's just the cost of doing business so those are those things you got to think about and getting you know surrounding yourself with really good people who are smarter than you is huge like i was lucky to marry into a family um where i'm getting i got just amazing business advice and tax advice people will think it's so boring taxes and it kind of is but it's boring. complex yeah and there are legal games to play, how to pay yourself, why, and how to make certain business decisions based on taxes, you know, things to think about, like payroll taxes, like I never would have thought. Don't mess with the EDD. They'll shut your business yeah. down. Pay your taxes. Um, I finally have a bookkeeper now. Yeah, it's just, it's <laughs> in bookkeeping. Yeah. Just the cost of doing taxes, yeah. right? Yeah. You got to pay someone to do those oh, taxes. Yeah. Things that you got to think about when you're starting a business that you don't really think about if you're not keeping track of anything. And, and once they're set up, it's not that hard, you know. No. Um, once we still got to do our taxes, we yeah. file an extension. But 
it's not that tough. It's just learning yeah. a new system of doing your books. Yeah. The barrier of entry to having an S-Corp is fairly low, I think. And Relatively low. Yeah. I think it's fairly low. Yeah. Just, you know, if I don't have a question, I have someone to call. I know that not everybody has that in their life. But if you're listening out there, I would encourage you to seek out people who know what the heck they're talking about. Yeah. Like, it is so valuable. If you're in college, talk to your professor. To go, If you're in media or film or something like that, go talk to the accounting professor. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, dude, if I want to do this after college, yeah. what do I need it, to think it's about? A, it's, it's a, a lot of it is business. Like, a lot of what we dealt with with the business, it's, it's uh, not the art. Yeah, art. it's not the art at all. Um, you know, we can produce good work, but most of what we have to deal with is is business um, decisions. You know, yeah. um, taxes. Yeah. When it com- and but not just the money parts of it. A lot of it is like, okay, how to work together well, how to pitch clients. We maybe we can get into that in another episode. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, know, yeah. pros and cons. Like we've lost, con- we've lost, jo- not lost jobs, but we've failed in acquiring new yep. new clients already in the last year. Yep. But it's because we're out there pitching people. Yep. You know, people are reaching out. Um, we want to be more on the offensive yep. in the new year and not just respond to people reaching out to us. How do we do that? Um, but a lot of a lot of our time is like. You know, how do we get better at this? How do we sell people and let them see our value? Because you're educating your customers, right? Yeah. How do we allow them to see our value and get paid what we need to get paid because we know the work that we're going to produce yeah. for them is good? If your work is good, you know, you have a lot, you have a lot of things to work on business-wise. Um, a lot of that is client relations is a huge, huge part of it, I think. If not one of the most, you know, if not the most important part of what we do is, <laughs> you know, most of our our clients, we have got because they like working with us. Yeah, it's like, or they knew someone who liked working yeah. with us. Come Which, with a smile. Yeah, and treat Don't, everyone <laughs> like it, okay. Looking right into the camera, if you're watching this on YouTube, speaking directly into the microphone. Some of the best advice you can ever get in business. Don't be a jerk, and take the high road every time yeah every time do not burn bridges be gracious be nice and take the high road and more often than not it's going to come back and it's just going to benefit you just be a nice person yeah yeah i think i think um yeah just be a good person on set be happy be fun to work with yeah they're going to want you back um and then you can figure out numbers yeah. Down the line, right? That's another whole conversation is how do you figure out yeah. the pricing? Yeah, and budgeting, and we can maybe go into that in the episode. But, you know, being being nice to people, they're going to go out of their way to work with you. Mm-hmm. Like if they're at a big company and they're like, we got this this thing coming up, um, whoever is the point of contact is going to say, oh, I'm going to go I'm gonna go back to these people. Yeah. Because they liked working with you. It makes the, their job and, easier. And, yeah, and, and one thing is you never know um, where a job's going to come from, right? Even the smallest job, because we both had relationships before this where we had relationships with clients, right? And um, the jobs were fairly small because we were on our own. Uh, but then, you know, they get in positions where they can hire us for a lot more money. Yep. And it's, You never it, know who's yeah, going to go up never, that ladder. Yeah, you never know. You know, I'm not saying be nice because they might help you out sometime, but just be nice all the time. But a, a lot of times those, those people will remember you. And if they're in a position to help you out and hire you, they will. So... Mm-hmm. You know, it's something to keep in mind when you're dealing with people on set. Just be happy. Just in, be in, excited. In business, I, I've learned um, not not just in this company, but in my other company. So a lot of the time, I mean, I'm in the gym business, so there's signs, there's cancels, there's all that stuff. But I've had to eat so much money because I wanted to take the high road. You never know. You never know who that person's going to go talk to. Yeah. And if if you can not allow them to say a single bad thing about you, I mean, that speaks volumes, right? Yeah. So just don't put yourself in a position to where someone can't say something good about you. Yep. Like these guys busted their butt. They woke up, you know, at four in the morning. They drove out here. They did a, you know, a, a I, so many hours. Little tip. If you're gonna go into <laughs> filmmaking or photography in that matter, for that matter, uh, you're gonna wake up so early. So early. All your shoot times, like that's one thing I didn't realize. It's like 
oh, we want the best light. Best lights at five in the morning. Like oh, you have yeah. to be on, uh, on location. Four. Time, <laughs> like, yeah. time change happens this weekend, bro. <laughs> no. Um, wait, is that good for us? It gives us more light in the afternoon, but it means we wake up an hour <laughs> earlier. So sunrise is going to happen like five. Something. So yeah, you'll be waking up earlier and staying out later shooting. Man. Just, it's all right. So that's kind of like just a general brief overview of some of the boring business stuff. Yeah. I mean, you could just talk. We could we talk about business for hours and hours yeah. and hours. But some of the fun stuff is, okay, so we, we both came into this business with our own gear, right? I shot photography, a hint of video. Well, not a hint, some video. Um, David, like 100% video. Yeah, my whole business was uh, filmmaking. So it was wedding filmmaking. I had yep. uh, four or five cameras at one point last yeah. year yeah. <laughs> from Panasonic. So we both came into the situation with... <laughs> five cameras. That's and true. Was that G9, GH5, GH5, S1, H, S1. I think I unneeded, but I've always had about that many. Jesus Christ. Crazy. They were needed for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I came in with some. He came in yep. with some. And we'll kind of go through what happened, where we're currently at. So so I came in with, I had just gotten my first cinema camera. And it was it was the Zcam E2 F6, the full frame cinema camera. It was a Canon mount, uh, EF mount yeah, camera. Yeah. So the, the old mount, not their new RF system. And I also had on the photography side and then the 8-bit video side, I had like the Sony a7 III, the a7R III. And I had like one of the crop sensor cameras too, and then like a full gamut of Sony glass. And then what'd you have? So I like I said, I had all those the Panasonic um, systems. So I was S one H as the main shooter. I used S one H. My fiance is our second shooter on the filmmaking, the wedding filmmaking. So she was shooting on S one. We had two GH fives, one as a back camera. Um, I don't know. We had two GH fives and then another G nine as a spare on a wedding day. Um, and the reason we had Panasonic is because the IBIS on them is amazing. And when you're running, gunning around on a wedding day, it's so great not to have a tripod or a monopod on you all day. So, yeah, Panasonic was our weapon of choice. Little, I don't know, going into something a little bit different. I recently found my dad's VHS camera, and I think the autofocus was better than <laughs> those current Panasonics. Dude, my manual focus game, though. <laughs> on fire these that's, days that's true i learned how to how, how to manual focus but yeah we both had a variety of lenses i mean he has a, a ton of lenses i have a ton of lenses i have sony i have canon mount i it's Ooh, i got a contact size kit i'll yeah. have to bring it by one time yeah so it was kind of a nightmare and then we would shoot on the s1h and the z cam most of the time for video that and was the worst i mean it wasn't they, you the know hardest, they were like you know? the same sensor but there's it's still different um, the color difference. The color difference. So we were, we were having to match that in post. A lot of the time, we'd shoot like a multicam, and then we'd realize, nah, we're just going to use one angle. Yeah, and let's so, just make it look simple, right? Yeah, so the multicam would help with cuts, you know, certain cuts. But, man, sometimes it was just like, we got to get this project out. We yep. don't want to tweak the color for a few days. Like, let's just use that one camera angle. Yeah. That looked good. Color looked great. Let's go with that. But... That kind of became, it was just an issue for us. It's like, we can't continue shooting two different cameras, mm -hmm. systems, lenses, you know. We had to figure something out. Yeah. So, like, you were well-versed in video. I was getting versed in, like, the cinema camera world and what everything meant and how to shoot and how it was different um, and how to deal with external audio and all that. Yep. And, like, on the horizon in the back of my mind, because I had all those Sony lenses, was like, what if that FX6 comes out? Because the FX9 was out. And it was big. It was eleven thousand dollars. It didn't do like one four K one twenty. It had some. It's more like a broadcast camera. And I think it's still a fantastic camera, but it's big, right? It was huge. So that FX six announcement happened. That was and insane. Yeah, that was insane because well, all I ever wanted from a camera. Well, it started with the A seven S three, right? It came before, right? This A seven S three announcement. Oh, it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I canceled my pre-order. So I was you like, did. nope. nope yeah, we were, we were kind of holding out. Yeah, we were kind of holding out. But that 4K 60 full frame was looking pretty good. Yep. Um, and the, yeah, the the 120 is a 1.1 crop. So so we were actually, now I remember, we were in between the Komodo. We're like, dude, maybe oh, we should get the Komodo. No, dude, we were thinking about getting uh, the Komodo and the, uh, what's the other red? 
The Gemini. Gemini, that yeah. Like uh, Julian Jari, he was gonna hook up a used one because he who's really into the used market, and he was gonna like help us out getting yeah, a, like I a twenty thousand dollar kitted out yeah. Gemini, and then like a, the Komodo, which kitted out's like ten grand still. Yeah, yeah. So we were trying to figure out what to do, and, and we had enough revenue to not justify it. We wouldn't been able to pay ourselves that much, but we yeah. could have said we could have tried to justify it, which we all do in our own heads, right? We, justify it. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're <laughs> we need it. Yeah. And we're about to just fire the camera we actually bought. Yeah. Um, so we were trying to choose the right camera for us. We knew we had to upgrade. And and for me, a big thing was, okay, the system we do upgrade for the business kind of has to work for my wedding filmmaking business yep. a little. You know, like yep. if we're going to use cin- like certain glass or, or the system we're going to use for the business, we interchange our own gear a lot. Mm-hmm. All right. So it's like. Okay, what's going to work well if we have a Komodo? You know, it's like it, there was a lot of things that kind of went into the thought process of it. But I think number one was just the usability of the FX6. Yep. Like that bad boy, the size of it, it's so small. And if we, you're watching this on YouTube, David has one back over there. Yeah, and right. I have one over here. So we ended up buying two of them. <clears throat> and fun fact. Um, fun fact. This this one right here, I don't know about yours, David, but this one right Gravity. here, the serial number is under ten. So I don't know how well, I don't know what happened, but <laughs> I mean I do, but I I don't know if I want to give about I don't know don't if I want to give out that little nugget of information. I have a secret, but um, we were able to get these. We ordered within the first like fifteen minutes that the pre order came up. We were actually on our way to a shoot yeah. together, and I we accidentally ordered three of them. And I had to cancel an order, make another order. So I was worried, like, oh, no, I'm going to be way back out, yeah. in the queue. And uh, that was a month before they were supposed to ship. And then when they sh- when they were supposed to ship was, like, December 15th, right? Because we ordered it on, like, November 15th yeah. I don't, I don't even in remember. the morning. I think so. And, in like, December 15th, it was supposed to ship. And both of ours shipped. And then we started hearing stories about no one else is shipping yeah like yeah. no one and everyone and there and i was like yeah i just got mine and uh on all like the facebook groups which i recommend you you're part of if you're in like filmmaking they're a wealth of knowledge but shooters um, club facebook group coming soon i know right um but what was i saying oh we we, we nobody else was getting them and then the weeks passed Nobody else was getting them, and we're here chilling with two of them. And we don't have a lot of jobs in the middle of it's December. It's the winter. A lot yeah. of the work. Th- you know what? Let's get into a little bit if we have time on on why we made the decision. You know, we were, oh on this. Yeah, and, and I I think why we ended up with the FX sixes yep. was what we shoot. You know, yes, we're well, not true. we're not in Hollywood. We're not in L.A. We're not out shooting uh, music videos. You know, we don't really need like the the komodo system for us is yeah like, why sony over red we're gonna have to build it up so much you know to get it to where we want is but red raw worth it is the 16-bit red raw worth it over the 10-bit 422 we can get yeah yeah like the, the clients that we have they they just they're not looking at the color space they're not looking at anything like that right they they're talking head videos a lot of it is is a sit-down interview with b-roll yep. right we and have it's the non-sexy stuff and i'm sure that you guys out there listening can attest to that if you've been doing this for a little while the non-sexy stuff is your bread and butter yeah yeah this is the, the commercial the co- the corporate basically this is the corporate work yep and um which i love doing you know there's a certain art to it um you can bring your own style to it but yep. um we don't have to build out a Komodo. You know, the client doesn't know if it's a red or not. They're never going to ask what kind of camera we're bringing. And there's a lot of unnecessary steps that we would have had to have taken on the Komodo. If, if you don't know, on every red sensor, it crops in when yeah. your frame rate goes up. So if you're in 6K, yeah, so cool, you're in Super 35. 4K, now so you're down. Ross had a ton of Sony glass, played a huge part. All my yep. glass is full frame. So I was like, okay, I want to shoot full, full frame already. Yep. Um, and then we don't have to rig it up. It's already fully rigged, you know? Like, what? Yeah. Um, I, I had just bought two red GDU. Oh, you did? Uh, you V-mount did, batteries. Yeah. They look so cool. I ended up returning them because on on these cameras, so I was using typically 98 watt hour batteries. And on these cameras, 
these 98 watt hour batteries are tiny and they just go right back into the back of the camera. You don't have to have a rail system where you rig out like a V mount. It's just easy. Yeah, it's 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 simple. We can a lot of times we're moving from location to location. We're on the go. Um, like I said, they're not rigged up. We want to be able to put them in a pack and just jump in the car and go down to the next yeah. location. Shout out to Tenba and Porta Brace. Yep. Tenba sent me over uh, their doctor's bag style. So it literally just I have a fully rigged out camera. Yeah. I pop out the D tap from the back battery, put it in the doctor's bag, zip it up with the monitor. With well, I don't think I can put a monitor on this one. Plop the monitor off the off the NATO rail. Easy. The regular people have to buy their gear. <laughs> Porta Brace sent me nothing, but they have a great bag, and it's. I might actually get another Porta Brace bag specifically for the FX6. This one's a little tight that I have. And I'll be posting it on IG if you guys want to check it out. It's, oh, yeah. it's a cool bag. It has the right tones, the colors to it, but <laughs> it might not be the best. Uh, but yeah, so the FX6s were a great camera for corporate work. And then my thought behind it was, well, I can just go with the A7S three for my wedding business. And then we have multiple cameras that we can use. Same across, sensor. Yeah, across multiple um, businesses. Ross can use his in the gym. You know, he's shooting slow-mo. We're filming on it right now for yep. this. Um, so Sony just had an overall better system. I, I was, you know when you switch systems, like I was originally on Canon, I had the 1DX Mark II, and then I switched over to Sony, and then I was just hyped on Sony. Yeah. And then Sony came out with a whole bunch of stuff, and then they had like a lull for a while, yeah. and then Canon oh, had the R yeah. system, and I was like, it like low-key kind of sad. Yeah. Even though my, my, oh, I, my I, stuff is fine. I like, used to make fun of Ross because he was waiting out for the A7S III, and I'd just make fun of him because I had an S1H. Yep. Um, listen to our previous podcast. Yeah, but the problem with the, all those other cameras, the S1H and S1 specifically for me was the crop at a, in a wedding. I don't want to be cropping, 4K60. Yeah, for, cropping in for 4k 60. And then, so Sony just completely, so, you know, life was tough last year, but for cameras, it was freaking amazing. Oh, it was probably yeah. the, it was, since I've been in this world of, photography and filmmaking probably the best year <laughs> for releases right oh my god i think sony has the best mirrorless camera in this a7s3 it's just so fun to use um so it just made sense yeah us, you know yeah um, all the glass the fx6 like their whole lineup is like you can go from small little tiny camera and then once you go you can go corporate you get that bigger fx6 they have a good progression and then even the fx3 that i might be getting soon why i need four cameras three i don't know it's less than the five you had before <laughs> yeah but for weddings it's kind of what i do so i need the gear it's just at the end of the day it's just gear right we want it no it's part of who you are no i'm i don't stick to any <laughs> brand but because i i did shoot a7s3 for so long, the a7s and then a7 three for so long but if sony if sony's listening was, though i stick to a brand <laughs> yeah ross does but um, if they produce good cameras, you know, I'm always open to, to look yeah. around, but they had the eight bit for a while, you know, their, their color wasn't great, but honestly, they knocked it out of the park with the a7s three. And we've, and we've shot projects on eight yeah. bit before and yeah. you, you just have to be more aware of, oh, they your, look great. They look, yeah. they look great, but it's like, you can't push it. You have to nail everything exactly in camera, but yeah, the a7s three is, uh, the perfect camera along with the fx6 yeah just doing everything we needed to do yeah. so you know we we're able to you know sell the z cam stuff i sold my ef class the sigma stuff you sold and are still oh, oh you, you're bad. done I'm right done. i got every rid of everything at a loss by the way not a lot of people were looking out for an s1h or s1 surprise i thought eh, you know someone will pick it up but granted i'm not the best reseller i don't Post if, everywhere, but... If you're going to sell your gear, though, I think a good lesson is sell it quickly because yeah. you never know, like, what camera is going to come out. If yeah. you're going to sell it, do it. Yeah, it ended up losing a lot of value, but what I did, I ended up trading it in at Camera West. Um, I got an A7S III. I got an old film camera that I like to talk about once we shoot, um, shoot even some client work on it. Um, but, uh, yeah, we got rid of everything, and now we're fully... So I take everything I said back, Sony. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I am so loyal. I'm on the Sony train. Uh, yep. But yeah, we're fully Sony at now. And that is, that's the fun part about what we do. You know, it's all the gear because at the end of the day, we do like the gear. But um, you have to be able to produce with it. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. 
Um, so yeah, there's there's the gear that Lux is using, double FX6s, uh, yeah, some Sony uh, A7S threes when we need them. Pretty much yep. all all Sony glass except for like the random Sigma 105 on occasion. Yeah, some Tamrons. Yeah, some Tamrons. Uh, you have which Tamron now? I have the set. Uh, what is it? Seventy. No. No, I have twenty-eight to 20, seventy-five. Twenty-eight to seventy-five. Cool and the, little lens. And then we also have the seventy, 70 to one hundred and eighty. Yeah, it's a cool combo. I really like that seventy to one hundred and eighty. Especially we were shooting a lot of photos, so Super ironically, light. we got the A seven S three, and I was I've been shooting kind of basically off photography with it. <laughs> it's blasphemy, but twelve megapixels, which works. So if you're exporting, uh, twelve megapixels is still four K. 3840 by 2160. Yeah. That's a lot. If you're not cropping. <laughs> we've purchased the, all this gear and, and we've been shooting a lot of um, photography. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is funny. So I've been, <laughs> I've been getting back into photography and then I was shooting with the 70 to 180 and that was a great camera for what we do. We, we are outside landscape, a lot of yep. landscape. We work in the ag business. Um, that's one thing we, we would like to touch upon if, if we have time. Just a little bit of the niche, maybe we'll yeah. cover it. We might as well do it now. So, like, there's there's a debate, right, amongst businesses and photographers and filmmakers. Like, do you do everything or do you specialize? And I think there's pros and cons to both. But we decided to, I mean, I wouldn't call us, like, a specific niche, but we have a general niche. We're fairly specific. I mean, I, yeah, yeah. So our so our we're we're in the the agriculture business, and also in the kind of food and beverage business. Yeah, the kind of yeah. I guess you know not super niche. A general space we call it the yeah. farm to table. That you, they use that you know f- phrase a lot, but we call we call what we do farm to table because we're out there in the orchards with ag and um, you know various type types of ag hopefully going to be going into some other stuff soon yep. but then we're also on like the end consumer side consumer the beverage side, yeah. side you know things like that 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 are super fun to shoot too we are a farm to table production company yeah so <laughs> a, a, a variety of trademark. stuff it's not <laughs> no I don't, I don't think we can trademark that um but yeah so what we've been doing with these cameras is uh, a lot of outdoor um in the dirt we're out in the cold we're out in the in the heat so hot so we'll be putting it through its paces especially the fx6 is coming up we have a huge project i'm excited to to let you guys in on um and we have a couple other small other video projects that that we'll be getting out and yeah show some examples i mean on instagram we'll be out when it's 107 108 degrees and it's just it's hot it's we'll be shooting um, interviews in 4k 120 um, <laughs> just to test it out but i mean yeah we'll be able to put it through its paces um but yeah we decided to specialize just because uh, we identified what was around us right so if 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 we're, we're here in central california we're based in the modesto area and there's just a ton of ag so we're not specializing in surf photography and video yeah, right yeah you, we're not buying underwater housings look at what's around you what you like doing the people you already know you know and kind of that'll give you your idea of like okay what's the market look like what are the connections i do have and what can bring me more work so kind of just keep everything in in in, um, in play but also go after what you just like doing you know like yeah. you can also go down that route and find work there's always work it's just a matter how you can get to it and get people to pay you to do what you do um, but I think with the day and age we're at now, you can create whatever you want, wherever you're at. Um, Absolutely. You know, that's a big thing with the internet. For sure. So in 2020, like, well, let's, let's talk about kind of, we talked about how we started the company. Um, how did 2020 go for us? How is 2021 going for us? And kind of not like necessarily financial or monetary goals, but like, what are we what are we planning to do in the future? And then how are we then going to achieve those goals? Yeah, I, th- I think for 2020, I think we didn't have many expectations starting the company. You're like, oh, you know, we, th- we thought we'll get a few jobs here and there. We'll kind of just get the ball rolling, right? We're, we'll- we're of the mindset where we want to specialize, but you kind of have to take everything that comes your way because at the end of the day, you're running a business and businesses need money to operate. Yeah, yeah. Um, within reason. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> within reason. Yes. Because we have we have turned some things away. But 
it's like we were we were so ready to just let's get the ball rolling and, and um, not have expectations. But I think our expectations for the business were blown out of the water, at least Co- for me. Completely out of the water. Um, I, I think we've been busy since we started the company. Busy yep. than, you know, I would have ever anticipated. We have we have fantastic clients. Yeah. And we have clients who appreciate us and kind of let us do what we do, right? Yeah. They're not over our shoulder all the time. Yeah. They They kind of trust us. And... That goes back to those relationships, right? Yeah, finding the right type of clients. Um, so we've been super busy. I think I think the business progressed a lot farther than, quickly. Th- yeah, than I than I thought. And then the need for video, you know, I thought oh, maybe there's already some production companies out there. It doesn't matter if you're doing good work. You're fun to work with. The work's gonna come. And we're we're small and we're nimble, right? So there are a few other agencies or production companies in our area, but they're not. I mean. They're not like L.A. Yeah. or San Francisco level of like bloated, huge businesses or anything like that. But we're so small um, that we're really nimble. Yeah. Oh, we can say we can have the ability to say, yes, like we can go do that right now. Like yeah. we can get there. Yeah. And I think with with both of our businesses, my my other business, it's, you know, I'm mostly working weekends. It's weddings. I'm editing during the week. So I'm a little free, you know, to kind of work a lot on Lux. Um, wherever yep. we need to, I'm able to move things around. And I have employees. Yep. I still work a ton on that business, but yep. I, it's it's a different kind of schedule. We have a unique like a unique situation where we, we have our own business, so we can kind of turn away some jobs. We can take jobs that we want. We can re- move things around very easily to, to make things work. Absolutely. Granted, um, we still work like 80 hours a week, yeah, but we come, come back home and then start work again at 9.30. Yeah, that's, that's part of the <laughs> it's part of the deal. That's the hustle. But I, yeah, I think 2020 was amazing for us. I think I I, I want to do wh- whatever we did, double it, triple it, you know, for yep. 2021. And I think we're on pace. We have some awesome, awesome jobs coming up that I think are going to uh, we're going to outdo ourselves in 2021. Absolutely. But we also want to start uh, pitching. We also want to start not just, you know, you, you have a client come to you and they mm-hmm. say like, you know, I want to do this. And then you talk about the project, you figure out their budget and you, you figure out if it's going to work for both parties and all that stuff. But we also want to go out there and be on the offensive and pitch and say, hey, we, we understand your, your business. We understand yeah. your, your customers and your clients and all that stuff or whoever you're trying to market to. We think that we could help you, you know, achieve your goals or do whatever you need to do. Yeah, so. I think I think that's going to be our next hurdle. You know, like that's yep. where we need to get to um, in 2021. And the question is like, do we do it ourselves? Do we have some, do we bring on someone to, to help with that? And then the business side of it is what we talk about all the time. Like the business side of it is like, oh, are we just going to pay someone? Are they going to make points? Are they going to, you know, make a percentage yeah. of the project? Like how does that all work? And I think that's kind of up to, the individual business like ours to figure out. Yeah, and, and I think we can share some of that as like, yeah. as, as we learn and if we hire someone, you know, we can kind of share our story along the way. Um, I think we can continue to talk about what we've done. If you guys have questions, go ahead and message us on uh, Lux Production House, you know, Instagram individually, you yeah. know. Um, but yeah, we'll keep you guys updated as the business kind of grows and, and do we grow it? You know, like there's a lot of decisions that goes, that goes into like, do you want to, grow you know and to have employees that's a big question you know like yeah and growing super fast and making a ton of money can be a curse for a business if you grow and you have too much work then you can't get to the other work then you hire on people then you're making the same if not less money because you've then hired people and then yeah is it worth it or should have you stayed should you have stayed a little bit smaller and focused on bigger clients like it's a smaller i'm a fan of the slow and slow and low lifestyle so if we take it slow, I think I think it will be fine. Yeah, I mean, I would love to make a hundred thousand dollars for a video, but uh, you know, I, I would love to do that before making thirty videos and making three grand a piece. <laughs> you know, so yeah, you know, one day maybe we one can day, have a crew, something like that. Um, I, I do want to start doing higher end stuff as we get more work under our belt. Because yeah, we're still you know, learning yeah. along the way. You know, and, and I think what you guys will get to kind of watch is is going from corporate to co- more commercial, you know. Um, that's our goal. So we'll kind of keep you guys updated on that as well, like how much corporate work we're doing, you know, the the, the more corporate style shoots into the more commercial. And I'd love to share, you know, with you guys our our process as we navigate the, the world of business through uh, videography. Yeah. 
But yeah, again, if, if anyone listening or watching has any questions at all on on business or anything like that that we talked about in this episode, uh, leave a comment, you know, shoot us a DM on Instagram. David is at Capture Color. Capture Color, C-O-L-O-U-R. The English way <laughs> yeah. of spelling color. I always confuse myself with it. And then uh, I'm the Brotographer. So that is the underscore brotographer you'll see my uh avatars like me jumping yeah. with some sony cameras uh yeah message me there and uh i'll i'll do my best to answer um yeah but let us know I and mean, the business stuff is not as exciting to talk about but almost in a way i think it's more important yeah it's probably the most important there, there are people out there who just do way better work than i could ever do but maybe in the end they don't set themselves up the right way to to actually financially Keep producing that yeah, yeah. They, they they don't reap the rewards um, with that good work so there's a there's a way to set it up and again we're not legal people we're not attorneys but um we think that that we can share some of the nuggets of information that we've learned from other people and that we're currently employing in our business yeah. and we're just we're just starting you know like we just started last year so you guys will get to kind of learn along with us which is which is uh will be the fun part for everyone i think yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I I think that I think that's pretty much it for this episode. We first episode back. Yeah, twenty twenty one. Jesus I, Christ! I can't believe it's been this long. I know. But uh, we're we're wanting to start this back up again. We would like to have some you know virtual guests, uh, things like that, and uh, maybe be on a few other podcasts as well. That'd be great. So see you guys in twenty twenty two. I know, right? I know. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys uh, very much for just hanging around. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, follow us on our Instagram accounts. Yep. And, and yeah, I guess uh, we'll see you in the next one. We don't really have see a sign ya. out, do we? We'll just kind of like slow talk our way out of this episode. Peace. All right, guys. We'll see you in the next one.